is Act of Worship, your source for commentary and discussion on worship, theology, and culture. I'm your host, Dr. Jonathan Michael Jones. Well, good day to you and welcome to the Act of Worship podcast. This is Dr. Jonathan Michael Jones continuing today with the Psalm Project. And uh, Sunday we covered Psalm 11. We are here at Psalm 12 now. It's hard to believe that we're through 12 Psalms already. <laughs> uh, we're getting through it. It is going to be slow. Um, but one of my goals in doing it this way is hopefully you're able to meditate and really chew on these Psalms. They are so rich. Uh, that's why it is my favorite book. There's so much, uh, not just relevant to Israel and their worship, but relevant to Christian worship. And not only that, but you see references to the Psalms throughout Scripture. Jesus himself quoted the Psalms. And so the Psalms are incredibly important. They are vital to Christianity. And so here we are at Psalm 12. This will certainly be a short commentary, which sometimes you will have that. You won't have to listen to me jabber on and on and on unless I chase a rabbit tail like I'm doing now, and you have to listen to me talk. So um, I, I won't prolong it, though. Here we go. Psalm 12. Uh, let's read it first. And so this, um, uh, in my Bible, the title is called The Faithful Have Vanished. And uh, it says, to the choir master, according to the Shemineth, uh, again, <laughs> as I've mentioned before, if you don't know what that word means, it is probably a musical or liturgical term. And that's probably what it he is it here. This is a Psalm of David. David himself was a musician. So many of these Psalms were likely written as songs. Let's get into it. Psalm 12, beginning in verse 1. Save, O Lord, for the godly one is gone, for the faithful have vanished from among the children of man. Everyone utters lies to his neighbor. With flattering lips and a double heart they speak. May the Lord cut off all flattering lips, the tongue that makes great boasts. Those who say, with our tongue we will prevail, our lips are with us. Who is master over us? Because the poor are plundered, because the needy groan, I will now arise, says the Lord. I will place him in the safety for which he longs. The words of the Lord are pure words, like silver refined in the furnace on the ground, purified seven times. You, O Lord, will keep them. You will guard us from this generation forever. On every side the wicked prowl as vileness is exalted among the children of man. So obviously a cry from the psalmist, from David here, for justice, for God to work and accomplish his justice where injustice is being served. In verse 1, he says, Save, O Lord, for the godly one is gone. When, when Jesus rode his donkey... Uh, or rode the donkey into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday. And the people shouted, Hosanna, which literally means save us, O Lord. So it's not, Hosanna is not necessarily a cry of kingship or, uh, or authority or royalty, as some might assume, but it is a cry to save them. And so um, this, th these are sort of linked when the Messiah comes in riding into Jerusalem on a humble donkey, the people are crying for him to save them. And here the Psalmist David says, save O Lord for the godly one is gone. This is similar to Elijah in first Kings chapter 19, where Elijah is crying out for his life. And, and he says, it is enough now, O Lord, take away my life for I'm no better than my father's. And so the psalmist here feels abandoned, like no one else is around to support him. He feels alone in his devotion to the Lord, similar to what Jeremiah felt. And in verse 2, everyone utters lies to his neighbor. 
Literally, they speak lies or emptiness, including outright falsehood, falsehoods, but also insincere or an irres- irresponsible talk, which cheapens and corrodes human co- communication. And people think it's not a big deal, you know, if you um, speak emptiness or deceit, irresponsible speech, insincere speech. That this is not a big deal, but it is. And God finds it to be a big deal. In verse 3, may the Lord cut off all flattering lips. To be cut off usually means to be excluded from the community, but occasionally it may mean death when you see this phrase in Scripture. Cut off all flattering lips. It could certainly mean death. And then we see this phrase that we see a lot in the Psalms. We've already covered it quite a bit in verse 5. Rather than the psalmist saying, Arise, O Lord, God himself is saying, I will now arise. It's not as if God is asleep, because he doesn't need sleep, but he is saying, I will arise. He is assuring his people that he sees the injustice happening and will bring justice into that place. So this psalm uh, makes a great musical setting, um, almost a warlike, uh, march-like, hymn-like um, setting that I've, I've employed here. And so hopefully uh, this will bless you. You'll be able to worship through this. And that's my hope and my goal is as you listen to these podcasts and as you listen to the musical settings that you are able to worship God through this. So without any further ado, here is Psalm 12. Thank you for listening today to the Act of Worship podcast. This is Dr. Jonathan Michael Jones. Oh, glory.